Why Christians feel bad after leaving their church. This is one I can speak on with a lot of experience. <laughs> um, when I was a little baby born in the hospital, my the senior pastor's wife came in to visit my mother and prayed over me, dedicated me to the Lord. And then uh, I went before the whole congregation as a baby and I was dedicated again before the Lord. And I was in church buildings and uh, never missed a Sunday kind of thing up until I was about 17 years old. And when I had a job and they started saying, could you work on a Sunday? And I was getting really fed up with the whole church thing by then. And I'd say, yeah, sure, I can work on a Sunday. Not a problem. I can do that. And uh, so I started to skip out on church here and there. And, you know, my parents would treat it as if I was leaving the Lord or something. And, and then I ended up just stopping going altogether after I got out of high school and I was working at different jobs and and uh, it took me many years to before I finally got truly born again um, I was a false professing Christian most of those years but I've seen this thing the guilt that was put on me because I wasn't attending the church that I was raised in and I've been part of the thing of in church leadership you know functioning as a I was never a senior pastor but I functioned as sort of an assistant pastor and of course in street ministry and you know a lot of other positions and you know put guilt putting guilt trips on people why aren't you in church I didn't see you in church this past week and the whole thing so I not only was on the receiving end I was also on the giving end I also tried to make people feel very guilty about not coming and you say, well, it's, a, it's all just spiritual. People need to be in the church. It's important to stay in good fellowship with the Lord and, and whatever else. You know, as, as though I'm not in good fellowship with the Lord out here. You know, I know this is anathema to many of the quote-unquote brethren that I'd actually be, you know, preaching a little mini sermon out here in the woods. Not a big theological study, of course, but just a little walk and talk sermon. Um, this is a deadly heresy, I guess, for me to be out here. But... Oh well, um, but I'm going to give you some reasons from Scripture. Let me put some Scriptures up here for you to read and consider. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be teachers among you, false teachers among you, excuse me, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. It will be very popular, in other words. These people, they will become very popular. I'll tell you the reason why as we continue. But look at verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Um, they come along and they covet your presence. Um, there are bills that need to be paid. There are uh, debts to the bank. Um, the fact of the matter is most churches out there are run like a business. Uh, how many people did we have on Sunday? What was the amount of offering that we gave? Or how far are we behind on bills and things? And I remember going to meetings, you know, at the different churches and things, and, and uh, a lot of the meeting was about finances. It was, just simply was. And if, you're, if you've been to church and been active at all in anything there, you know what I'm talking about. You know that that's what they do. They get into all the business stuff of it. And uh, how are we going to pay this bill? And do you think we could make a special supper? And could we go so far as to do this? Or could we, business, money, that's what it's about. Should we uh, get a bus ministry to get more people in here? Should we have uh, um it's a thing called um, uh, Vacation Bible School. So we get a Vacation Bible School going so we can get people's children, you know, in the area here to come to the Vacation Bible School. It's a business. That's what it is. Because they have debts to pay. And so when you don't come, those uh, covetous hirelings, they come along to you and they start to say, um, hey, we missed you. Mr. Tithe last week. <laughs> That's the reality of it, if they were being honest. Uh, missed seeing you last week. Oh, you everything okay? You just, you all right? And Hey, uh, really starting to get a little worried about you. You know, you need to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together here. You know what I'm saying? 
Very important for you to be in church here, friend. You know, why weren't you in church last week? So, uh, northern uh, superfood here on this tree, this birch tree, right there and up there. This is chaga. And uh, sort of a very valuable, very rare mushroom. And um, it's on my property. So out here walking around a little bit today. But um, that's what chaga looks like when it's growing in the wild, if you didn't know. Um, let me read a couple other verses of scripture to you here. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 through 18 tells another story of why they put a guilt trip on you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Exactly. Good words and fair speeches. We're worried about you. Oh, we're just, it's so important that you, you stay in fellowship and in the body of Christ, we need you. We need you at church. We miss you at church and everything. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's that there are people that have just, it's all just evil motives, but there are people that are stuck in the system. They don't understand even what they're part of, as I didn't for many years. And then I was challenged on some of the stuff of where the church building's at in the New Testament for Christians. I understand that they went to the Jewish synagogues as a way to witness to the Jews. The early Jew Jewish Christians did that. But uh, you didn't see many Gentile Christians going to the synagogues because uh, they would have gotten in a lot of trouble. All right? Uh, you're not exactly supposed to go into a synagogue there in the first century as a Gentile Christian. That's why one of the reasons they hated Paul so much because they accused him of bringing unclean Gentiles into the synagogue. Um, not really understanding the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. Those Jews didn't get that. They still don't get it. They try to uh, earn heaven and whatever else, or a better resurrection, I guess, uh, through good works. Uh, exactly as all false cults do. But, um, ah, getting spider webs in my face. Uh, but they will use good words and fair speeches. That's what they use. I'll give you some more scriptures here. Third John verses uh, chapter one. There's only one chapter, but verses nine through eleven says here. I wrote wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. <sighs> there are a lot of uh, diatrophies, pastor diatrophies out there. Um, you'll see these guys, and they love to have the preeminence. They love to be, I'm the man of God here, I'm the pastor here, I'm the head of the corporation. Um, that's the reality of it. They want to be the big boss man and and uh, tell people what to do and tell people what to think and um, and I've been I've gotten into arguments with you know some of these hirelings and I've literally gotten them mad and they'll say you know this is my church church and this is my pulpit and I'll tell people what to do here. I told this story before about a hireling that uh, said that right to my wife and my myself because we weren't uh, going along with the system that he had. Um, you know, and my wife was also raised going to church buildings as well. She went to a Lutheran church. I went to an independent Bible church. So we're both very familiar with organized religion. Uh, we aren't, you know, we were secular and then we started going to church later in life or something. No, we were both raised around organized religion. So we both have, between the two of us, our shared experiences are, uh, we've been through a lot. But you'll see this thing of diatrophies. And again, when you are dealing with the diatrophies type of preacher, he'll kick certain people out, but if you're uh if you were among the faithful tithers, then he will try to get you back in. And he will put mind control guilt trips on you. Again, I've seen that. 
I've seen it over the years and you know I've been part of it I've been part of that whole thing in church leadership positions and you you know you meet people and you say oh I didn't see you in church last week everything okay you know you use the good words and the fair speeches to, to deceive the hearts of the simple and you know the really sick thing a lot of these pastors at these church buildings they understand if you corner them and you sit them down and you say where are the church buildings in the New Testament where does it say that we're supposed to have church buildings they might fumble around a little bit and try to deceive you but uh, when you get right down to it and you put them in in their place they'll say yeah there are no New, Te New Testament church buildings you say where's the 10 percent tie that yeah, it's not there where's Sunday best where does it say that we're supposed to dress up in some special uniform or outfit to come to church and it doesn't really say that either brother you know, you know we know these things but there's been a lot of good things done with that system uh, well there's been a lot more evil done in that system than good if you know anything at all, you'll understand that. Um, let me read another verse of scripture here uh, that perfectly describes the whole church building thing. Paul, writing to the Corinthians, he says, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 18, Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, like diatrophies, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, howbeit wherensoever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Um, I have to be bold in a lot of my preaching. I have the bugs out here again, sorry I have to reach for those occasionally. And if you hear me going, I'm trying to blow one away from my fat face and... <laughs> I'm not having a hard time breathing or something. But <laughs> the black capped chickadees above me here um, in the trees. But this whole um, thing there of if a man bring you into bondage. You know it's a bondage thing when you go to church buildings. Uh, hey, can you, can you come in and, and uh, donate some time to being in the nursery? Could you come in and um, help clean the church building? Would, if you have you know, some free time, would you be able to go out and, and do some visitation work? Hey, could you come and, and uh, be involved with the youth ministry? Could you come and, and mow the yard? Could you? I think I already said that. Uh, but pretty soon, you pr pretty much have no life other than the uh, church corporation. And, and, and again, I'm not being insulting. They are corporations. They literally are 501c3 tax-exempt corporations. That's what these buildings are. It's rather sickening. And again, where in the New Testament does it ever say we're supposed to incorporate under secular, secular government authority? Pretty sickening. But that's what they do. And they bring you into bondage. That's why when you leave, you feel bad. Because if you're a good-natured person, uh, you know, you want to be there for people and to help people and whatever else. And um, so these hirelings, they'll come along and they'll steal from you. They'll bring you into bondage. And as the scripture there said, if a man take of you, well, don't you know that you owe the church here, you owe 10% of your tithe. Uh, where's that at in the New Testament? It's not there. And they know it. And they know it. Um, they're taught that stuff in seminary. The people question you about the tithe thing, just come up with an excuse or just you know, say whatever. Or we always have done this or it's important. or Well, maybe it's not in the New Testament, but it's still a good standard. Sickening. Uh, if a man exalt himself, like I said, that's what they do. And they come along with their reverend and their doctor titles and I'm this ultra high pastor and you don't dare question me and whatever else pretty sickening so why do you feel bad when you leave a church building because truth be told let me just be very blunt here um, as Paul said that I will speak boldly well I'm going to speak boldly the reason you feel guilty when you leave a church building is because you're leaving a cult a cult of personality 
a man that was there that uh, uh, I don't care how nice a guy he was. Remember, it's good words and fair speeches. So that's how they deceive you. But uh, you go to these places, it becomes a cult of personality. And I've seen it even when a man is a good man and he doesn't want people to worship him and follow him, the people still will. You know, you come there and you're, you got your church building and pretty soon the people are worshiping you and you try your best to put a sermon out and you put your heart and soul into it. And the people say, wow, that was a really good sermon. And they'll come out and they'll say, oh, brother, that was such a good sermon. Man, I've never heard a guy preach like this before. Um, you know, I mean, just amazing what you said there. I never thought, wow, you know. And it, I mean, look at my comments. You'll see it. You'll see people trying to worship me, even though I don't ask for it. And if I had a church building, I'd have a bunch of people that would move to the area to go to my church. And, um, you know, oh, Brother Brian, oh, he's, let's have Pastor Appreciation Day. Where does it say that? That in the New Testament, it doesn't. A uh, preacher is just supposed to be a servant, and that's what I try to do. And um, I don't want a church building. <laughs> I have a whole study on that, um, a couple of reasons why I don't want a church building, or why I will never have a church building. Um... I'll get the truth out through social media online because it's a good way to do it. And if that doesn't work, then I'll probably go back to uh, offline video and, and writing books. I have one book, but I'd like to write more. Um, we'll see about that in the future. So uh, hopefully that will explain things. And you know what? If you're in that whole thing of you're coming out of one of these cults, these cult buildings, um, you feel the guilt and everything else. Be encouraged. You're not doing anything that will displease the Lord by leaving one of these church buildings. Uh, not happening. You're not going to get up to the Lord and the Lord's going to say, oh, I'm just going to open up this new New Testament that was kind of, uh, wasn't really written. It was just kind of, it came out after the New Testament was finished and it has church buildings and Sunday best and 10% tithe in it. You just weren't aware of it. But I'm going to have to judge you from the New New Testament. <laughs> uh, uh No, it doesn't happen that way. So, hopefully that's been a challenge to you. Or maybe an encouragement, rather. And um, we'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.